I'm here, Andrew, laying down. So we'll do bird popping over to back bird. So the first thing I consider when I'm teaching something new is sharing from my experience some of the falls I've had, right? Yep. So here, let's say you're going over, you're gonna pop over to back bird this way. Right. If your flyer just flops over like this, it can really hurt their back. She will, okay. She'll warn a stag and knee as she pops over. Uh -huh. And I find this is less of a compression on the back. And it gives a really nice look, right? You have that nice stag look. So that's one thing I do. Two is when you're ever you're bound with the hands like this and you're falling over, mm -hmm. she is bound. It's very dangerous, right? right. And she'll make that sound. <laughs> <laughs> it, makes, it makes sense if you're bound and coming over this way. Mm -hmm. So if there is a fall, anytime there is a fall that's about to happen, what I do is I immediately lower my legs and try to keep their torso higher than their yeah. feet. So I'm just trying to get them upright again. Mm -hmm. But particularly with bound hands, you could hurt their wrists too. Mm -hmm. So be really mindful not to hold on to the wrists if they fall over too. Mm -hmm. Open support, right? So we always talk about, I always teach about helping but not hindering, right? We're supporting, but we're not holding on, okay? So here comes the techniques for the pop. A common mistake I made when I first did this pop was I, I did this, one, two, and I popped from here. Uh -huh. When you pop from bird here, it's okay, but it doesn't give you quite the lift you need. You want to pivot your feet out and pop from this, from a stacked position. Watch this. Okay. When you pop here, you can get a lot more pop than you can, let's go back to bird, popping from here. The reason why is uh, once the hips are stacked, you're able to pop their whole body up oh. and over. And this is key when you're doing things more advanced later, like popping okay. into hand to hand, you know? Uh -huh. it's, it's not impossible, it's nearly impossible to get them from here over to this inverted position. But if you're here already, they're already in an inverted position, uh -huh. it's more natural for them to get up into like star, straddle, or back bird. Okay. Okay. Um, so, we'll come back down again. Okay, that's what Caroline was talking about. Uh-huh. So, coming back over. Good work, Ami. First thing I do, the hands, right? We know that the whichever way that you're going towards, mm -hmm. you want that hand to be on top. And sometimes I'll, I'll see, you've based enough so you know where the hand is. Sometimes those flies will go like this, oh, right? So you have to be mindful of what point B is. Point B is star hands, right? You gotta get into that. So my timing is I pivot out, I dip a bit. When you dip, it helps them stack their hips. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I pop up, then catch yeah. over. So before I pop anything, I always walk it to get the motion, uh -huh. get the flyer very familiar with what the feeling feels like okay. to go from bird over the back bird. And I'll walk it a few times and then I'll pop it. Back over, back to bird, hips down, okay. Okay, hands. Are you popping it up? We'll walk one more time then pop. Okay. So I'll go one, two, dip. And then I'll actually, instead of saying pop, because when I say pop, I'm saying it for me as a base. I'm going to say stag. I'll say one, two, stag for her, yeah. for the flyer, so the flyer knows to remember to stag that leg to protect her back. So that's one way I communicate. I always communicate so with the idea of the flyer. As you pop her before or after? I would say uh, right during. So yeah, let's go again. Yeah. yeah, if she stags before, mm -hmm. it kind of, I think, gets in the way of the foot. If she stags right now, I think it'll get in the way of the yeah, pop. Okay. Yeah, it gets in a little way. So. I'll go one, two, stag, and then she stags in the motion. Which is the other foot. Yeah, she that. stags. I think most of the time that's how I've stagged it on the right leg. Mm -hmm. uh, the one that you're, that you're actually throwing from is not going to be the stag, it's going to be the other one. I uh, think it. I don't know if there's a difference. You <laughs> tell me, Ami. From my perspective, uh huh. Um, I don't know why that one's easier because it's, it's the one natural, right? around the top. Mm hmm because it's coming over. Either, if either leg is stagged, then you're going to get the tension in the back that's going to prevent it from just okay. it doesn't hanging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's stag that leg, see if it feels really awkward for you. Okay. So you're normally stagging this leg, right? I think, oh, it's because it's the leg that's free when yeah. I'm Yes, it makes I'm sense because when there's a pop, yeah. you I want that leg straight. I think of how I would stag if that leg yeah. was on your foot. And she can help a lot by well, when she's... Once you're in the air. Yeah. Once yeah. you see her, watch her pike here. It's nice and strong, mm -hmm. and she's tensing her hips. A if lot you have, of people don't do this yeah. bike. Oh. And it makes it really hard for you. And when she tenses this hip, it makes it easier for you to pop too. Mm -hmm. It's nice and firm, right? Okay. So one, two, pop. 
I mean, one, two, stag. Say stag instead okay. of pop. You know the pop in your mind. Yeah. One, two, stag helps the fly know what to do. And, it, and, and one thing I did when I was first spacing, I always forgot the arms. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's just because you're so focused on the legs. Right. Keep those arms nice and stacked so your fly has okay. something to push off. Okay. If those are fall, be really mindful. You're going to drop your leg right away and push up. 